Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel Houseplanty Goodness and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me. I talk about tropical houseplants and how to care for them. Today's video I want to focus a bit more on a very specific type of Monstera and I'll bring it up so you can see it. So this is what is still I think known as the Monstera Spa or Monstera species Peru. I'll bring it in a bit closer so you might be able to see some of the texture of the leaves. And I'll show you the backside as well. So from the name Monstera Spa or Monstera species Peru, it tells you that this specific plant has not been officially classified yet. So it doesn't have an official botanical name yet. So Usually when you see something like Species Peru, it's, it's essentially telling you where this plant was originally discovered or found. So it would go, it would stand to reason that this plant was found originally in Peru. Obviously it's part of the Monstera genus and it, by extent this is an aroid. Now let me tell you a bit more about what I do in terms of care for this plant and then we'll talk a bit about what my experiences have been generally caring for this plant. So I do have it in a terracotta pot, like I generally like to do with most of my Monstera that are still in a soil. So this is in a growing media that have actually no soil, but it is my light, airy, chunky aroid mix. The base for that would be cocoa coir or coconut husks. And you can see a video of how I make that within my channel as well. And in terms of care, and I'll put this down so we can talk a bit more, in terms of care for this plant, it's very much a Monstera that I found wants to go fully dry before it is then drenched with water again until the next time that it needs watering. It is a very, very slow grower in relation to a lot of other Monstera that I own. I'm thinking of my Deliciosa, even my variegated Monsteras. This is almost as slow as the Monstera Thai constellation, I'd say almost to about the same level, definitely much slower than the Siltipicana, for instance. It is even slower than some of my shingling Monsteras, like the Dubaya. But, and that is the big thing to know about this plant, it is a bit of a slow grower. I find when you give it a bit more light, especially in the summer months, it will kind of ramp up and it will start growing a bit faster. But this is a slow growing plant, at least in my experience, and at least from what I'm seeing from other people's experiences as well. I did find it quite, not challenging, but I needed to kind of find what it liked and what it didn't like. So take from that what you will, but essentially it's a plant that I discovered really quickly that it likes to dry out fully. In terms of pest pressures, I found that this is one that thrips will go to really, really quickly. So just bear that in mind. Sometimes you might get some spider mites as well, but overall, even with the thrips and the spider mites, it's less frequent than you might get with some other plants. I found this to be less attractive, I think, to some of the pests. That's just in my experience. You might have different experiences if you do, do let me know down in the comments below and I'd love to have that conversation with you and kind of find out a bit more. But definitely one that if you want to chop and propagate, it can be quite slow to get going. And with the power of some editing, I will show you now some propagations that I took as cuttings. Granted, they were just runner cuttings because one of the, got a couple of these plants now because I propagated them. But I'll show you how slow it can be. Just give me a sec. So this is a propagation and I'll bring it in a bit closer so you can see how teeny tiny that is. This has been going for almost six months. <laughs> that will give you an indication of how slow it is to propagate. At least that's been my experience. It's when you get the care down, it tends to kind of take care of itself. And this is a plant that I kept seeing. I think I did a video very, very early on my YouTube channel. Please don't go and look at that video. I'm sure it's cringeworthy. <laughs> but uh, um, it is one that I think I saw in plant stores quite a bit locally. This wasn't that difficult to find in the UK. I can't talk about the rest of Europe. And I know that this was at some point relatively tricky to find in the US. I don't know if that's changed now, but in the UK this was relatively 
easy to find in some plant stores. And it didn't have a hefty price tag either to it. It's interesting because over here this was sold as Epipremnum Marble Planet, which you can maybe see why they tried to go for that bit more commercial name based on the texture of those leaves. And I wasn't fully taken with this plant, to be completely honest, when I kept seeing it in the store. But it was one of the few plants that, having not bought it that first and second and third time that I saw it, it kept playing in the back of my mind going, I'm not sure, but I think I like that plant. I'm not sure, but I think I like that plant. And eventually I just bit the bullet and just went, you know what, I'll buy this. And actually, this is still one of those plants in my collection that I am 100% happy that I purchased. Even with the fact that it's a bit slow and all the rest of it, this is a very cool plant. It gives me a, quite a bit of joy in terms of the texture of the leaves. It's unlike anything else I've got in my collection. The leaves are also quite stiff and quite, they're not succulent, but they are quite th thick and stiff. They're a bit cardboardy, if that makes sense. But very, very, very cool. And definitely something that will give you something different in your collection. Or even if you don't have a big collection and you want something to add to your house, as long as you're comfortable with this growing a bit slower, that's fine. But it's a very, very interesting plant and definitely a bit of a conversation starter. Some people might really like the texture. Some people might sit there and go, what in, what in the hell is wrong with that plant? Is it sickly? Is it anything like that? Just purely because of the way that the leaves grow. But it's kind of very cool. It's very reminiscent and the slightly older generation will probably get me a bit more on this. I don't know if the kids still have this in school. I've not been a kid for many years. But I don't know if people remember from maybe a history lesson where you get those maps on the wall in history and they were slightly raised where the mountains were and things like that. that that's the kind of texture that you'll get on this plant. And to me, that's kind of cool. I was a bit of a geography geek anyway, so. <laughs> but um, yeah, very, very cool plant. Relatively easy to care for as well. I don't, I've got this in regular household humidity as well as in my plant room. It doesn't seem to need any extra humidity. It can do okay in slightly lower light situations. I actually found that this works a bit better in medium to bright in direct light rather than full on bright indirect light. But that might just be my experience. It definitely needs something to climb up. You can see that I had to support it up against a bit of a kind of janky trellis <laughs> up there with the janky support sticks. But um, when you give it something to kind of latch onto or even kind of wind through, you'll get the slightly larger leaves like this. If you let it trail down, it will trail down, but the leaves do get really, really small. I'll show you one of the newer leaves which eventually will get a bit bigger. Maybe not because it's not attached to anything, but they can get slightly larger leaves. I have been growing this for quite a few years now and it, because it's a slow grower, I don't know and I don't think I was able to find anything back in when I first bought it online in terms of what the mature form of this plant might be. It might stay like this. It might not get any larger leaves or any more fenestrated leaves. But if you've had an experience with this plant and you've managed to get it to a different look, to a different level of maturity, please do share it down below. I'd love to hear about that because the last time I was looking at it online, and granted this was a while ago now, I couldn't find any pictures of this in a more mature form to see if the kind of the, the look of the leaves changes over time. But yeah. That's what I wanted to say about this plant. There's not an awful lot to say. And again, like I said in a previous video, if I don't have a lot to say about the care of a plant, generally you can take from that that it's a relatively easy plant to take care of. At least it has been in my experience. But yeah, as always, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.